Oh, it's early, but give him a raise. Chris Ladondo, co-creator of Constellation Park, right producer of the Puppet Apocalypse. I leave it to him. Be nice. <laughs> yeah. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Asbury Park Comic Con. Uh, thanks for coming out to the Of Clerks and Comic Book Men panel. Uh, you ready for the boys? Yeah! yeah. Okay, we are. No. Uh, okay. First guy I want to bring out is the star of Clerks. Uh, you know him as Dante Hicks. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian O'Halloran. <laughs> Next up, uh, the star of uh, one of the stars of Comic Book Men, uh, and uh, from the hit pod, I Sell Comics, Mr. Michael Zapsik. With the little guy there. Right. Next. <laughs> Next up, uh, also a star from um, Comic Book Men and from I Sell Comics and All Around Nice Guy, Mr. Ming Chen. Is he going to let Johnson sit next to me? Nobody wants to sit next to me. Okay. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, also a star of uh, Comic Book Men. Uh, the influence for Randall and Clerks, the writer, producer, excuse me, writer, director, co-star of uh, Vulgar, Steve Dave himself, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Johnson. Okay, so I'm going to ask a couple of questions to the guys. They're all like 24, uh, but with a little uh, press for time. I really want to hear from uh, you guys, too. We have a microphone set up. So I'll just start it off with a couple of questions, and then we'll, we'll go to the audience. Okay, so 20 years ago, around this time, 1993, uh, Clerks began production. So the first question, uh, Brian O'Halloran, bring us back 20 years ago. What was it like? Clinton! <laughs> Tell us, how did you get involved in the project? How did you meet Kevin? And what was it the audition like? Um, I had some provocative pictures of his mom. No, um, <laughs> uh, I auditioned, uh, funny enough, as an extra. Uh, he was holding auditions out of a theater, a uh, uh, theater, uh, First Avenue Playhouse in um, Atlantic Highlands. And I had done uh, stage work out of there. So the owners were kind enough to uh, let Kevin use the space to audition with their stable of actors from the neighborhood. <laughs> um, so I auditioned. Uh, I went in there and uh, Vince Pereira was videotaping the auditions and Kevin had this really long like survey of an audition like application asking you like favorite movies and stuff like that. I didn't even know what I was auditioning for. I just knew that I had to come there with a monologue. I mean, I could have been auditioning for porn for all I knew. Um, but, you know, I said, I had asked Vince while porn we were in between. The high end of how bad it could get. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah true. Be better off. That is true. Um, so uh, I just auditioned, and uh, Kevin liked what I did. He said, too bad I don't have a villain in the, the flick, otherwise, you'd be perfect. And next thing you know, he had me call back uh, and read two more times the. Uh, Death Star scene. And he's like, "What do you think?" And I'm like, "Oh, this is funny. Um, the other guy's really funny." Uh, and he's like, "Well, do you, you want to do it?" And I was like, "Sure." And I'm like, "Who are they in the film?" Because I didn't know what the film was about. I'm like, "I thought this was like a store that the two like main characters come into, and that he's find these two clerks and then leave or something." He's like, "No, no. These guys are the are the main guys. These are the clerks." I'm like, "Oh, all right. Sounds good." <laughs> Johnson, 20 years ago, two minute rebuttal. Your friend. <laughs> I was in the back of the room waiting to do porn auditions. Well, <laughs> never showed. So what was it like when, when Kevin comes up and he says, I want to make a movie? Uh, was it like that or was it just something that just... He, Walt, and I went to... Actually, I never talked to him about that. He, Walt, and I went to um, a pizza place Exclusive right place. before he went to film school and said, here's what I'm going to do. And of course, Walt and I were like, 
but he, he was pretty steadfast, and uh, so he went off, he went to film school, and during that time, he and I had a falling out. It's nice of you to bring it up, because it was crushing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing up painful memories for him. That's yeah, right. Yeah. He only went to therapy for four years for it. Um, <laughs> I could have been Randall! But uh, that's the thing. If I was Randall, it would have been ruined. Like, Anderson would play me way better than I could ever play myself. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you play yourself pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, when it was done though, when, when Kevin completed the cut, he immediately called. He had been going to something called the, uh, the forum. It was like a self-help type thing, which is really like, it's like this weird sort of new agey thing that he got sucked into. And um, he called me and said, like, hey, I want you to watch the movie. So uh, I watched it and it was, like I'm not just saying this because he's my friend and it seems like it's, you know, telling the, the company line, but I was like, holy shit, this is so accurate. <laughs> like it seems so real, like not everything obviously fucking dead people and all that stuff, but, but, but it was so, like, it was the idea of like that, that many, yeah, I know, right? Would you, would you have like ridden a dead guy's cock if, <laughs> if Kevin's like, this is what it's going to take? That I would have to write a dead, yeah. I fucking did your movie Vulgar for fuck's sake. Yeah, right. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. What is it with you and me riding guys cops? In all fairness, I thought was I, I know. Okay. But there was three of them. There's a big difference, my friend. <laughs> One dead guy, three living guys. I don't know. I mean, they take the dead guy in that Yeah, one. you're right. You don't have to call the dead guy back. No. <laughs> Plus, I don't, have, I don't have performance anxiety then. I'm like, oh, I was, I was great. I killed. <laughs> Brian is on. Um, okay, so, Ming, you're a couple of years, I think, old. We're around the same age. Where were you when Clerks came out? When you Where was I? I was uh, at the Sweet university. shop in China. Yeah. <laughs> in Chinese oh, laundry. I was busy being a virgin. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I was at the school at the University of Michigan. Okay. And uh, when Clerks came out, I was working at a um, little video store uh, where we would get only one copy of the movie. And uh, that night when it came in, I didn't let anybody rent it. I grabbed it out for myself, <laughs> took it home. And, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, who, who is this guy with the goatee? He's like, holy shit. And I actually left, my brother popped it in and started watching it, and I came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. After all these years, folks, he's never learned. He's sitting across from Johnson, I can't steps win. in the bucket. I can't win. When I came home, he had watched half of it already. I'm like, I'm like and I, made, I actually made him rewind it so I could watch the whole thing. And, How um, did you know about it, though? Like, because the you, internet wasn't around. Did you hear the little kid who was like, what? Yeah, rewind. Oh, there's a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, before I came to the video, it, uh, we had a little indie theater, and it, it came there, and word kind of spread that uh, this movie was funny. But, uh, you know, I, I think I was like everybody else. Like, this is black and white. This is going to be shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> so many shitty movies have been made in black and white. <laughs> that stupid artist movie. Mike Zabs, first time seeing Clerks. Uh, actually, I saw Mallrats before I saw Clerks. Mm. So, um, but the first time that Clerks was, um, I can't even say that it was, uh, you know, proposed to me that you should watch this this movie. Uh, before Jane Silent Bob's was Jane Silent Bob's, it was a place called Comicology, and uh, the original Steve Dave owned the place, and he was the prototype for the comic book guy. I swear to God, Brian, am I lying? No, I mean, he looked like him, he acted like him. It really was, like, I wouldn't be surprised if one of the producers for The Simpsons went into that shop yeah. one day and was like, well, this is obviously the dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? So he's like, uh, excuse me, Michael, you were going to have to watch this movie, and he gives me a videotape. I want it back by tomorrow. That's exactly how he sounded. And um, so I watched it, and I was, I was really impressed. And uh, he's like, yes, uh, one of my reservists... Uh, made that movie. You owe me three dollars for the rental, and two dollars because you didn't rewind. That joke was for you. All right, so fast forward to uh, he wore a lot of purple too. He like, did. Yeah, he left it like when he, he sold Kevin the the store with everything, you know, all the stock and everything. Steve we found, did, not me. Yeah, yeah Steve did. <laughs> so when we, me and Walt uh, went in there to like clean everything out, it was unbelievable how many like purple sweatshirts and purple sweatpants and purple <laughs> regular shirts he left behind. It was nuts. Was he like a Vikings fan or something? No, I think he was like a Grimace fan. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, you know he dressed up like Buffalo Bill in the back of that store. <laughs> How would he even find it to tuck it? <laughs> That's weird. Um, tuck something. So fast forward to uh, AMC's comic book men. Uh, how did that show <laughs> come about? Yeah, fast later. forward to like 20 years later. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I start having a life again. <laughs> thanks to Kevin. <laughs> so how did that how did that come about? The the idea for the show was it was it true? Is because of the Tell Them Steve Day podcast or like was there originally a bunch of guys they were thinking about having a show in the stash and not including you guys? How how, how did it come about? Well, according to Kevin, uh, he said that he, he uh, there was a woman, Elise, who's an exec producer on Red State, and I guess she was friends with Charlie, right? Yes. Uh, uh, original one, Media? Yes, one of the producers of the show. Yeah, and I guess somebody had an idea for a uh, reality or unscripted show in, um, <laughs> in a comic book store, and they mentioned it to Kevin, and Kevin said, hey, I have a comic book store. If you want to make the pilot, you can, you know, use my store and they assumed that they would cast for it, and somebody, I don't know who it was at uh, AMC, listened to Tell Him Steve Dave, the show I do with Walton, our other friend Brian Quinn, who's on Impractical Jokers, and uh, called Kevin, and they were like, we don't want to cast, like, these are the guys, like, we want these guys. Little did they know at the time they'd have to substitute Quinn for these two clowns, but <laughs> 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 Quinn's, uh, you know, is on True TV, and they wouldn't allow him to do it. Wouldn't even allow him to, like, do a little thing like in the background. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mike Zabzik. First time finding out that you were going to be on a TV show. Blow, mind blown? Uh, hell yeah. Um, they brought the cameras in, and what the hell are these doing here? I thought Don Ming was putting up um, <laughs> webcams again, because he did that without our knowledge. <laughs> and Pop anything in anywhere? <laughs> hey, I, it was really weird to find out that people in uh, Utah were watching us, me and Walt, uh, dancing around the store, so started having to wear pants again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but but it was I was like really I'm gonna be on TV. There I'm is this, my dad. <laughs> there is this really weird like German beer fest music playing behind yeah. us. Yes, so softly. Yeah, exactly. Where is that coming from? Is anybody know? <laughs> sounds like take out the papers in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, I don't see anybody saying about a microphone. Nobody has questions. Let's go to questions. Anybody? You look yes. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to ask uh, probably when uh, Quarks came, when uh, Quarks 3 was uh, announced, like, how did you feel about it? Like, you go like, Cha -ching! oh, no. oh. <laughs> you hear that? Or, oh, no, not again. I had a card for that, sir. <laughs> oh, jump in the questions. You're getting ahead of me. No, yeah, go for it. Um, well, when he, when he announced it, uh, I was shocked um, because it was funny enough that when I taped my uh, episode of Comic Book Man... <laughs> Mr. O'Halloran, you have a call. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was... Uh, he told me the story, the storyline of what he has in mind for Clerk Street. And he's like, but I won't, I, you know, I won't be doing it for a while, so keep it hush-hush and blah, blah, blah. And then literally like a month and a half later, two months later, he's like, he's tweeting about it. I'm like, what happened to hush-hush? Keep it quiet. Like, All right. Um, so I, I hope it happens. You know, uh, there's a lot of workings on that still has to happen for it to happen. Kevin is in the midst of writing it right now from what I hear from his podcast. Um, and if it is as good as his pitch was to me, he told me the story of, like in a half an hour at the uh, production offices of Comic Book Man. Lock the doors. Oh, yeah. Let's hear it. <laughs> I'm not ever told. All right. To be honest with you, you know, we'll see what happens, uh, but it's, I, I think it's going to be one of his best written pieces That's to date, to be honest with you. I, uh, I was in Orlando these last couple of days, and Kevin was down there, and he asked me to read it, and I read the first 86 pages, and then he filled me in on the ending. It's pretty amazing. It's yeah, really uh, funny. Yeah, I don't think anybody well, will be disappointed. You read it, then you know more than you and, and I just heard his pitch, and I was just, we both were like, wow, this is... Unfortunately, it picks up in the deleted ending of the first movie, so you get shot immediately, <laughs> and you're not in it for the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's really it's really really funny. I think people like it. Spock gets uh, red matter, goes back in time, <laughs> comes to the store. And uh, just one follow-up question: Where can I see you in theater? Like anywhere else? Sorry. Um, God, I haven't uh, done anything in live theater since last year. So uh, I'm actually going to be. Um, I, don't, I don't know yet because I have a, a bunch of plates spinning at the moment. So 
right now theater is not on one of them? He washes dishes is what he means. <laughs> Do you know? Wait, I got a quick question for us to the next gentleman. Um, do you know if uh, Clark's three is going to be outside of the studio? Like, is he going to do it like Red State, kind of do it yourself type of deal? Uh, he didn't. He, well, he that he did.